Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I just want to do a quick follow up on the Grandstream WP822 Wi Fi IP phone. I've been using the phone now for several weeks and I just wanted to give you my thoughts and my feelings on what I experienced. Now, in today's video, I'm just going to cover a couple of things. Like I said, I want to talk to you about my overall feelings on how the phone performed. We'll go ahead, we'll go into the UI and I'll show you how to change the default admin password. We'll see if there's a firmware upgrade. I'll show you how to do a firmware upgrade. And then I also want to show you how I configured the phone for connecting to GDMS Remote Connect, as well as to a third party 3CX hosted phone system. And that was a question from TVJ in my recent live stream. So I wanted to include that in this video as well. And then I also want to show you a tip that I received from a viewer, James Middendorf, on adding the actual WP822 template to the Grandstream PBX. So if you're interested in seeing all this, then go ahead and stick around. So I've been using the Grandstream 822 for several weeks now, and overall I can say I'm happy with the device and its performance. I did take some notes during this time period, so if you see me glancing over to my notes, I hope you don't mind, but I just don't want to forget to share anything with you. So in the first video, I did mention that the phone came with about a half charge out of the box, and it took an hour and 20 minutes to get to a full charge. From an empty charge, I've experienced that it takes about two hours and 15 minutes to get to a full charge. Really not too bad. Grandstream does advertise a 200 hour standby. I actually got about 120 hours at best or about five days on standby. Grandstream does advertise eight hours of talk time. I really wasn't able to give it the full test, but I could tell you at half charge, I did get about two hours of talk time. So figure the math out from there. Overall voice quality was good. I personally thought it was better on speaker, but again, that could be just my personal preference. According to the folks I spoke to on the other end, they said my audio was pretty good as well. Every once in a while, it did kind of sound a little garbled for like a split second, but nothing to a point where you couldn't hold a conversation. It, it was definitely um, satisfactory to good as far as that's concerned. I also did notice that it happened um, towards the end of the longer call. So if you were on a short call, I really didn't notice it. But as the call got longer and longer, I, I did notice more often there was that split second of like a garbled sound. Again, nothing to a point where you could not have a quality conversation with someone on the other end. I didn't have any issues roaming from AP to AP, which I was pretty happy with. I do have Grandstream access points in this environment here, so I did test it with and without the voice enterprise, and I, I really didn't see a difference, but then again, in this network here, it's not all that big. There's not a lot of demand, So, but the voice enterprise, if you don't know, it prioritizes the, tr the voice traffic. It provides the clients with a list of the nearby APs to shorten the authentication and the roaming. And I did also have to turn on 802.11R on the actual SSID on the phone uh, to work with the voice enterprise. Again, with and without it, I really didn't see that much of a difference, but I'm sure in larger environments, um, it definitely is a benefit. As far as, again, overall performance, I was pretty happy with it. Now, were those split second of garbled conversation, uh, a result of my Wi-Fi. Hard to say because I did test the phone on several different Wi-Fi's. I did connect it to the Grandstream uh, GDMS remote connect so I could take it with me outside of this environment and try it on other Wi-Fi networks. But I can't really honestly say anything because I don't really feel that the period of time that I was testing it on these other networks was sufficient to actually um, come to a, an, an opinion or a decision on that. So again, overall, I do like the performance of it. I, I would buy it for the cost. I think it's worthwhile, especially somebody in an office environment that needs portability. Um, the phone will definitely meet those needs. So that said, I hope this information was helpful for you. 
What I'd like to do now is just get into the UI and show you how to change the admin password and do a firmware upgrade and then cover a couple other things in the video. All right, so here we are signed into the WP822's user interface. And as you can see on the status page, I have both account one and account two with successful SIP registrations. And we'll show you that a little bit later on. But first I wanna get the password changed. So let's go up to the maintenance menu and select web access. And we're gonna have the option here to change the user password and the admin password. For now, we're just gonna change the admin password you're going to need the current password that is located in the battery compartment underneath the battery that I showed you that in the last video. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to enter that here. And then I'm going to go ahead and change it to my super secret password. And it seems like the passwords match. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to say save and it's applying the changes and it says successfully applied. So let's log out now and test that. Let's sign back in. Username is admin and now it should have my new password and we're good to go. And again, you can see both SIP accounts are registered. Okay, so now we're gonna update the firmware. We're gonna go back to the maintenance menu. This time we're gonna select upgrade and provisioning. Here you can see you have the option of upgrading the firmware, but before we do that, we have to scroll down to the bottom and we have to change the firmware server path. I'm not sure why Grandstream does this, but this is no longer the current path. So I'm just gonna put in the new path, which is firmware.grandstream.com and I'm going to save and apply that. And now if there is a firmware update, we should be able to go ahead and load that into the device. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click start. But let me switch to the top camera. It says, upgrade available. Probably can't see that, do I wanna continue? So I'm going to hit yes on the phone. And now it's preparing the upgrade. We're upgrading the phone now. It's about 25 to 30%. So we'll come back when the phone has been fully upgraded. All right, so the phone finished the update. It only took about 10 or 15 more seconds after I cut the video. It did reboot and I did have to log back into the UI. So let's go take a look. And after the update, you can see now it's up to 1.0.11.8. So the firmware update was a success. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is how I connected the WP822 to the Grandstream GDMS Remote Connect. Now, originally in the original video, I went to accounts, account one, general settings. And all I did was put in the IP address of the PBS here under SIP server. I put in the SIP user ID and the authentication ID and the password and I hit save and apply and the phone was successfully registered. With the remote connect, you have to change your SIP server information from the internal IP to the address provided to you in the Grandstream PBX. And I'll show you later when we flip over to the Grandstream PBX UI where you can get this information. Now, obviously I have it grayed out for a reason, but that's not the only change you have to make for internal use. Just putting in these several pieces of information here on this screen is sufficient. However, for connecting to re the Remote Connect GDMS Cloud, there are a couple other things we have to do. So after you put in the GDMS information here under SIP server, you're gonna come down, you're gonna hit save and apply, and that's what I did. Then the next step is to come over to the network settings and change NAT traversal from auto to stun, save and apply that change. And then one more under SIP settings, under basic settings, 
you have to scroll all the way down to where it says SIP transport. And by default, it's set to UDP for the internal connection, but for connection to the remote connect GDMS cloud, you have to change it from UDP to TLS slash TCP, come down and hit save and apply. So again, let's just review under account one general settings for local connection. You put in the internal IP address of the SIP server, the SIP user ID, the authenticate ID and the password, and you're good to go for access to GDMS remote connect. You change the SIP server to the GDMS address provided by your PBX, your grand stream PBX. You need the SIP user ID, the authenticate ID and the authenticate password. Then you also need to make the change net traversal to stun under network settings. And then under SIP settings, basic settings, you need to make sure you change SIP transport from UDP to TLS slash TCP. Now let's talk about the second account, account two. We're going to come up to account two now. We're going to go to general settings. And here's where I connected the WP822 directly to a hosted 3CX server. I gave the account name controlling Joe over controlling technologies was nice enough to create an extension for me on his 3CX hosted server. So in the SIP server field, I had to put the address of his hosted 3CX instance, the user ID, the authenticate ID and the authenticate password, then just come down and simply hit save and apply and we're good to go. As a result, if we go over to the status page, both accounts configured, as I mentioned previously, you can see both account one and account two have successful SIP registrations. Okay, so now I'm signed into the UCM 6302 PBX, and I just have a couple more things I wanna share with you before we end this video. The first I wanna show you, if you come down to the left menu here, down to remote connect, Here's where you get the address to plug into the device for connection to the GDMS remote connect. Now, if you're using the soft phone client, you're gonna use the wave remote connect address. And if you're using the IP endpoint, you're gonna use this address right here. So all I did was copy this address here and paste it into the SIP server field on the WP822 itself. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you, if I come to other features and I come to zero config, when I first configured the WP822, I took you into enter mode and I had mentioned that the template did not exist here. Following that video's airing, James Biddendorf, a subscriber, as well as an experienced VoIP installer, does a lot of work with Willie Howe. He was kind enough to bring to my attention that the WP822 template could be added to the PBX. And he actually gave me in the comment, the steps on how to do that. So I'd like to thank James for sharing that tip with me and doing it in such a professional manner. So I thought I would share that with you, what I learned from James in this video. So under zero config, you can see now, thanks to James, I do have the template installed and this is what he taught me. So under the main zero config, menu if you come across here to model update and scroll all the way down to model template package list you can see all the grand stream models here so i went all the way over since it was the wp model i went all the way over to the last page and you can see now the wp822 and the wp825 you can see the 822 is not available for download because i already downloaded it to the pbx from that step you then go up to model templates and then click on add the previously downloaded package list and you can see here now that the WP822 template is added to the 6302 therefore allowing it to show up now in that drop down menu so James thank you so much again for that tip and I do appreciate the manner in which you shared it Okay, so there you go. I gave you my thoughts on the device itself. I showed you how to change the password, how to update the firmware, 
I showed you how to connect it not only to the GDMS Remote Connect, but also to a 3CX hosted system. Again, thanks, Joe Trelli, for supplying the extension to me. I also, again, want to thank James Middendorf for helping me get the template added to the 6302. I really do appreciate that, James. And also thank you for being a viewer and subscriber of the channel. So if you like this video and you like this type of content, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of the other videos that I have listed here up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I want to thank you as I do in every video for using the Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. Once again, my name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching and see you next time.